Okay, this question talks about how we deal with interest expense for companies who have issued bonds. So this uh, company issued $5,000, $1,000 face value 7% bonds to yield 6%. Important thing to notice right there is 7% is the coupon rate. Uh, the yield rate is 6%, so when the yield rate is lower than the coupon rate, that means the price is going to be higher than the face value, which means it's sold at a premium. Uh, it's paid semi-annually and due seven years later, 2004 to 2011. On its uh, first year income statement, so December 31st, 2005, how much interest expense should they have? So interest expense throughout the year is calculated by the present value of the bond at the beginning of the period times the yield rate throughout the period. So if we have a quick timeline, these are six month timelines, so six months in and then 12 months in, here's where our income statement is going to be paid. We want the interest expense to be this PV, so it, I'll say at times zero, times the interest rate during this period. That'll take us to here. Then we need to calculate the new present value here, so six months in, and times that same yield rate to get the interest expense over this period. Add those two together, and that'll be the interest expense that we should report for that entire year because these are six month intervals, so this is over one year. So this is actually quite easy to do with a financial calculator. Uh, all we have to do is enter everything to find the present value at time zero. So the future value is 5,000. There's 5,000 of the bonds times 1,000, so that's 5 million bucks of face value. Uh, for the payment, actually, you know what? I won't even put 5,000 of, of face value. I'm going to leave the 5,000 out until the end, and we can always, uh, we'll just multiply all of our answers by 5,000. So 1,000 bucks face value, or future value, I should say. Uh, the payment is based on the 7%. That's the coupon rate. So 7% divided by 2 because it's semi-annually. That's 3.5%. And 3.5% of 1,000 is a $35 coupon payment. Uh, the number of payments there will be will be 14 because it's over a 7-year period twice per year. And uh, last thing is the interest rate or the yield rate, that's the 6% divided by 2, so we enter that as 3 for 3%. Three then we'll compute the PV, which will be our time zero present value, which we then need to multiply by 5,000. So punching that in the calculator, I get a present value of 5282401, so 5.282 million point eight three. And that should make sense. We would expect that to be higher than the $5 million in face value because we know it's sold at a premium. So the whole idea is the interest expense from, uh, you know, that will be paid uh, at time six. So I'll write time six there or half a year in is that five point, so five, two, eight, two, four, oh, one point eight, three times the yield rate, because we're holding that amount of money, that yield rate of 3% over a, uh, the 3% is over the six month period. Uh, and that will be an interest expense in the first six months of 158,472 around to the nearest dollar there. So that's the interest expense that should be paid at time six months. And for the interest expense, at time 12 months, and then we're going to add these two together, we need the PV at time 6. So this guy right here, how will I find that? I'll do this exact same calculator, except for I'm going to change the number of payments left to 13. That's the easiest way to find the present value. Yeah, we could roll that present value uh, forward before by um, adding in that interest expense and subtracting out the coupon payment, but I think it's even easier because we have a financial calculator, just change N to 13, calculate the new present value times by 5,000, and we get a new present value of 526, I'll write it down here first, 5265873.88. So as we expect, it's gone down because it is amortizing that premium down to eventually at the end of 11 years it'll be down to 5 million uh, to match the face value.
5265873.88 times 0.03 and we get 157976 add those two together because that makes up the total income statement over that whole year the 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 payment of interest the interest expense at time six months and the interest expense at the end of the year. So add those together and we get 316448 $316,448 of interest expense throughout the year. Again, easiest way to figure out interest expense is just the present value of the bond at any time times the yield rate that's associated with the period you're rolling it forward for. So in this case, six months. So we had to divide our annual yield rate by two. Hopefully that's helpful. You can always send us more questions, info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.